Welcome to Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. I am excited about our guest. We have Nehemiah Davis, serial entrepreneur who has been able to retire his mother, retire his wife, has been around the world so many times, 55 countries and counting, has been on all media platforms, Yahoo, Black Enterprise, Steve Harvey Show. This guy can help you monetize your Instagram like no other. Neil. Appreciate you. Thank hey, you bro, so much for joining much us. For me. I'm super excited to be on the ball. And just shout out to you and the team for just putting on such a phenomenal show that's going to change so many lives. Nah, man. for sure. And so speak, speaking of, of changing lives, right? So, man, I, like, I don't even know where to start, right? So serial entrepreneur, world traveler. You've been to 55 countries. You've uh, retired your mother, retired your wife. You're a, a mentor. There's so much stuff. But I, I want to know, who is Nehemiah Davis. Talk to me about, about All right, so a little bit about me growing up. Uh, my dad been in jail since I was two years old. He, was recently, uh, he recently died there, so he was in jail about 30 years or so for committing murder, so they said. Um, I was raised by my mom and grandma, so my entire life, you know, those were my role models. Those were my, you know, my parents, essentially. And uh, that's how I grew up. And my mom's objective was to give me the best education with the money she had, so she sent me to private school. Mm -hmm. I believe like once your mind is expanded to a new concept or idea, it's hard to go back to his original way of thinking. Prior to me going to that private school, what motivated me was drug dealing, was cars, was clothes, because that's all I saw. That's what I thought success was until I went to this private school and it was out of, out of a thousand kids, only 50 African-Americans in this school. I'm seeing kids drive to school in Benz's, uh, uh, BMWs, all type of crazy stuff that I didn't even know exists. One of my best friends, Frank Cocos, I used to spend the night at his house. House set on about three, four acres of land, dirt bikes, four wheelers. Um, the dude even had a pool house. The only pool house exists on Fresh Prince of Bel Air, right, right? Right, right. So I ended up getting kicked out of that particular school, um, went to a new school, which afforded me the opportunity to go to college. I ended up getting kicked out of college. Um, I had 10 jobs, ended up getting fired from all, all of them. My final job that really changed it all for me, I worked at the private airport, mm -hmm. which is called Atlantic Aviation. At this time, I've seen every type of celebrity, all these different multimillionaires and billionaires flying in every single day. And again, my favorite quote is, once your mind is expanded to a new concept or idea, it's hard to go back to his original way of thinking. So um, I started to believe I can have this stuff. And eventually I got fired from there. So at that moment, I made a decision like, man, enough is enough. I got to take ownership of my life. I can't keep hoping and wishing something's going to change. I got to change it for myself. 14 years later, man, I haven't looked back. I operate with one term. It has to work or it has to work. And wow. I've been a full-time entrepreneur ever since that day when people were saying, yo, you never going to mouth anything. I started to be like, yo, maybe you're right, but I'm going to make a change. I took ownership of my life. And fast forward to now, I'm a serial entrepreneur. I run a, a nonprofit. I've been helping so many people start businesses all around the world. And I just love being free and just changing lives. So who near my is just a free entrepreneur who just really loved giving back and, and putting other people in position to win and live their best life in like a short form story. Wow, 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 that's powerful. And so talk, talk to us about, you know, so you have an event space business, yep. right? Absolutely. Um, and, I, and I think that, that that's some, one of the things that intrigued me a lot is, um, you know, the, the craftiness of you being able to uh, take a uh, empty space and yep. really help people, you know, first you, you monetize it, yep but then also help people monetize. Talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I had my event space about four or five years now, and I got my event space, well, multiple event spaces, but I got my event space because someone, I, I've always been the guy, if someone tell me to do something, I try it. If it makes sense, like, yo, you think you should get an event space? I'm like, yo, it sounds like a good idea. Let me go ahead and get me an event space. And for me, I got that event space after I'm having event after event after event. The biggest expense when it comes to having an event it's the venue. Right. That is the biggest expense. And most people who are having these events, they're never making money. I started to realize the owner is making money whether their event is a success or whether their event is a failure. They're all, we're all they're making bread, right? So what I realized, I've decided to tap into that industry. And literally, I realized it was super successful. And three years later, after I was already successful in it, I started teaching other people how to do it because... I, I feel like there's a renaissance going on right now. Like, I, I think about it. Trucking been around forever. Yes. Event space been around forever. Being an author been around forever. 
ever. But I feel like we are now being exposed at higher rates and seeing that, that there's so many other options and ways for us to generate income. So I'm just trying to do my part to show people like, yo, I'll show you how to go ahead and find you a space whether you lease it or whether you buying it, right? You're able to get in there with minimum amount of money. They're not really focusing so much on your credit. I show you how to find one to two people to pay your overhead off over, over, over in the first 90 days. So I'll give you an example. When you first get in your space, uh, we're gonna have so many different events free, so we're gonna get all these people to come back, but generally we're gonna lock in the church. Mm -hmm. We're gonna lock in one monthly, two monthly events, which one is a pop-up shop, one is an art gallery. Those three events cover your overhead for the entire building. Mm -hmm. So think about me having a church on Wednesday, on Sundays, we, we rent our spots to different churches. Mm -hmm. It's your dead time anyway, from eight to 12, ain't nobody having no events. You sleeping, you chilling, or you going to church. So now we're getting people all around the world to pretty much get a free business because three clients is paying for your overhead now everything else is cash flow. Mm. When I figured out that, I'm like, yo, it's just another way for me to make money and I've been able to help like 150 people do it. So I feel wow. good about it. Wow. And, and so, so you know, speaking of helping people, right? And so I, I'll be fully transparent. Like yeah. you've actually helped me Appreciate personally, that. right? Because I know uh, COVID-19 has disrupted a lot of business models. Facts. And so as a financial educator, you know, my business model was heavily reliant on traveling, national conferences, things of that nature. Um, and then one day I saw you, you know, teaching people how to monetize Instagram. Yep. Uh, and I'm, I'll probably never, never talk on a stage again. Right. 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 Money, the, the social media money is that good. Talk a little right. bit about, you know, how did you figure out, um, you know, you know, social media uh, and, and, and what was the thought process around? Listen, you know, you have access to all of these people, you know, let, let you know, we should be monetizing. Right. Where, where'd you get that mindset So the from? first thing I tell people is commit first, figure out the rest later. So many people, they never get started because they're trying to perfect the process. I'm talking about start posting. People are like, yo, how do I make more money online? Are you posting every day? Are you being consistent? So that's the first thing I tell anybody, start posting. Next, give your gift away. Mm. Most people miss out on opportunities because a paycheck is not tied to it. Mm. So for years, I've been giving my gift away on social media. I've been learning about what's working, what's not working. And then once you get good at that particular gift, now you can monetize that, whether it's with eBooks like you show, whether it's with courses, whether it's with different products and services. And all you gotta do, do is begin to market. I tell people all the time, if they don't know you, they can't flow you. Mm. You're grinding. Whoa, 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 that's a bar, that's a bar. Whoa. Say that one more time. If they don't know you, they can't flow you. Okay. Like so many people right now ask, they are really good at what they do. They're the best bakers. Yeah. They're the best cooks. They're the best chefs. But they're the best kept secret. Mm. No one know they exist because they're focused and worried about, oh, what if I post too much? Ash Cash might say I'm posting too much. Such and such might. I'm not worrying about what no one is saying when I'm posting. I got two objectives when I'm posting. Either for you to support me or you to unfollow me. Either way, I'm getting results. Mm. Because I don't want you to follow me if you don't want to tap in with the information that I'm giving anyway. Mm. So what people got to begin to do is you just got to find your product and service. That's the first thing I tell every entrepreneur to do. There's so many influencers online that be in my DMs like, yo, how do I make money? I'm like, you got all these followers, you don't know how to make any, like, get you a product or a service first. What are you good at? What comes easy to you and harder to others? What can you package up and sell to your audience? And once you do that, you gotta start posting. You gotta find other influencers to post you. And you just gotta remain consistent. And once you do that over and over again, you can hit whatever your goal you want, whether it's a thousand a month, whether it's 10 grand a month, whether it's a hundred grand a month. It's all a numbers game. I tell the LOA, law of, law of averages, the more you put out, the better chances of you going to get success and get something back. Man, powerful, powerful, powerful. And so, they, so there's a universal law yeah. uh, that says the more you give, the more you get. Facts. Uh, and and I know from you know from following you, you know following your journey. Uh, like I said, you know you live you live a life, right? Yeah. Always on a private jet. Retired your moms. Retired your wife. Traveled to 55 countries. Uh, what kind of car you just bought? A Rolls Royce Wraith. Wraith, right? So my, so my guy got the Rolls Royce Wraith. Yeah. Um, dream. You know, and the band tee, right? You got the yeah, band tee too. I, I see the band tee, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, and but but uh, you're also a big giver. Yeah, I know absolutely. that personally, yeah. but but I've also uh, watched you mentor um, others yeah. uh, to success as well, right? Yeah. You know, Spurgo, fast, yeah. fast, fast out the tray, right? Yeah. yeah. Um, 
Talk to us a little bit about mentorship. Why yeah. is that important for you? And, and, and why is that part of your business model? Because it right. seems like it's part of your business model as well. Yeah, so let me share with you something I never really share because it doesn't sound like attractive. Like I tell people all the time, one of my secrets and claims to fame and not really fame, but it's serve your way to success. Mm. So for years, for the last 14 years, I've been giving back to the community, right? I've been doing back to school events where we give a thousand kids fully stuffed book bags, uh, Thanksgiving events where we bust and hundreds of homeless people provide them with warm meals, haircuts, and coats. Christmas events, we give a thousand kids brand new toys, a hundred on brand new bikes. Uh, March, we take a hundred to two hundred kids skiing, fully paid for inner city youth who had never experienced skiing. Out of ten people, probably only one person been skiing, especially African American. So I'm big on exposure. So I've been doing that really for 13 years. But everything that I've been doing is all about serving, serving your way to success. And what don't, most people don't know, you talked about a law earlier. The law of reciprocity states whatever you put out you're going to get back mm -hmm. so i've only been trying to put out i'm not putting these things out because i'm looking for something to come back but it just comes back mm -hmm. but everything that i do right now has been serving people and you never know one of my friends said you never know who has the power to bless you mm -hmm. so when i was on steve harvey's show i won the hoodie award prior it was thirty thousand dollar award and it was the neighborhood award i didn't win that because i'm this cool entrepreneur i won that because service mm -hmm. And the reason why I got on Steve Harvey's show, one of my friends made a connection, said, hey, I said, I want to propose on Steve Harvey. Mm. She said, hey, I'm going to set it up. Within 48 hours, it was set up, wow. right? $75,000 engagement. They paid for the rain. They flew my entire family out. They had Maxwell come sing for us. Everything that we want, wardrobe, it was all of that. Mm. I didn't, I didn't pay for that. So service allowed me to get there. So that has been a huge key to me. And next, you talked about mentorship. Mentorship is the key. Mm. Like people want to know, how do you get there quicker? I tell people all the time, you got to follow a system. And what system stands for is saving yourself time, energy, and money. And what mentors do, they allow you to save time, energy, and money. So I tell people all the time, you need to find as many mentors as possible in these different fields in your life. I got a spiritual mentor. I got a financial mentor. I got a real estate mentor. Because I realized one mentor can't give me everything that I need, so I have multiple mentors. Someone like Trace, 14 years old. This year he did his first million dollars. He's 14 years old. I took him on four different private jets. I took him on yachts. I've been able to fast track his life, things that he would have never been able to do on his own because he was able to tap in and get the information from somebody who already experienced it, somebody who already took all these bruises and bumps. So I tell people all the time, whether you're getting a mentor for free or whether you're paying, make sure that is a part of your success strategy because that's going to save you a lot of time. I tell people all the time, discipline weighs ounces, regret weighs tons. You want to get to the destination as quickly as possible and without having a mentor sometimes it just allows you to move so much slower. Like I started getting mentors like 21. Mm. I'm like, yo, what if I would have got them at 14 like mm. Trey? Mm. What if I would have got them at 12? What, a, what, what if I got them at 13? Yeah. And it would have been a game changer. And one other thing I always tell people is this, your biggest expense in life is what you do not know. Mm. So your goal is to seek out as much information as humanly possible, get as many mentors as possible, because they have the information. And now you don't got to go out here and bump your head and lose. Most people go bump their head, they fail, they lose enthusiasm and never get back into the game. Mm -hmm. So find somebody who's been in the game and allow you to kind of navigate and get there a lot quicker. Man, powerful, powerful, powerful. And so I know especially in our community, black and brown community, um, you know, we're not big on mindset. No. Right? Where we kind of feel like we're in our situations because we don't get to the bag fast enough. And like, let me just, you know, let me, let me just get to the bag first and then everything, everything else will work out. Um, what's your thoughts about, you know, mindset, you know, versus getting to the bag? Which should come first? I tell people all the time, you gotta build your mindset before you build your skill set. Mm. And the reason why you gotta build your mindset is because me as an entrepreneur right now, I've been building my mind for the last 13, 14 years. I could go walk through a room with 50 to 100 people. Everybody in that room could say something negative to me and it literally will bounce off. It don't even, it can't even infiltrate my conscious or my subconscious mind because I've been working on my mind that much for so long, they can't say nothing. So I tell people to build their skill set, build their mindset before their skill set because 
if you go fail, it won't affect me. It may hurt me momentarily, but I know that's not going to be the thing that stopped me from becoming an entrepreneur. If my mom or my dad tell me Nehemiah is not a good idea, I know that's not going to stop me from pursuing that idea. So I tell people all the time, you got to build your mindset up and you got to know what's right and what's wrong. I tell people all the time, the biggest way to kill a big dream is to introduce it to a small mind. Mm. Most people's dreams are killed automatically by them sharing it with somebody who isn't even qualified to help them even accomplish it. I went to college because my mom told me, son, go to college. This is what you should do. This is what successful people do. My mom never went to college. She, like, she wasn't successful with that, and I listened. Mm -hmm. My grandma, who I love more than anybody, and this is a part of mindset, you got to be very careful of who you're listening to. I love her more than anyone in the world. Son, you shouldn't travel. It's dangerous, grandson. Mm -hmm. I would have missed out on 55 countries because I would have listened to somebody who didn't even own a passport, mm -hmm. who'd been on one plane her entire life. So again, mindset isn't just you working on yourself, but it's also who, who, what you're letting in your mind, who you're listening to. Right. So you gotta be very mindful of protecting that. And then once you know for sure that you're standing on your own too, meaning you, you have complete control over your mind, go ahead and get to the bag, build that skill set up, get your money right. Because now if you fail, if something go wrong, you know it's a part of the process. Mm -hmm. It's a part of, it's supposed to happen. So everything ain't gonna go perfect. And now you know that instead of operating like this is a fantasy world where everything's going to be perfect. Wow, powerful, powerful. All right, so we are in the vault. Yeah. We just got million dollars worth of, worth, worth of game, right? Yeah. So we appreciate you. Um, and so we have our speed round yeah. where, you know, we take normal bank terms, we flip them, um, and, and really kind of get, you know, get more inside your vault, right? Yeah, get inside absolutely. your vault. Um, and so I want to talk about a deposit slip. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, you know, when you walk into a bank, a deposit slip is where you fill it out, you put money inside the bank. But for us here inside the vault, a deposit slip is a slip up. It's something that mm. some, a mistake that you've made. Yeah. Uh, so talk to us about uh, a deposit slip that you made, something that you've spent money on, something that you, uh, you know, or, 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 or messed up on some money uh, that you, you know, that you learned and you're like, all right, I would do this differently. There's two, two things that come to mind. One, not investing in myself soon enough, mm. meaning going to conferences, being around different people. There's power and proximity of osmosis. So now I spend as much money as possible to be around other people who are sharper than me and smarter than me. I tell people all the time, if you're the smartest person in your circle, you're in the wrong circle. You're not actually in the circle, you're in a cage. Mm. So you gotta be very mindful of making sure you're around the right people. So that was one slip up. Another slip up was ignoring like the IRS mm. one year. Yep. And that was cost me like 50, 60 grand. Mm. So now I do not, it's three people you don't wanna play with the I, the R, and the S. Sure. I'm not playing with them yeah. guys. Yeah, no, yeah. That's, so that's, a, that's my deposit slip. All right, perfect, yeah. perfect. And so talk, talk to me about your interest rate, right? So interest rate uh, is when you either lend money, yeah. right, and money that you get back from lending the money, or if you borrow money from a bank, you know, the money that you pay. But for us inside the vault, interest rate is how interested are you, right? What's your interest rate in what you do every day, right? And are you doing it because it's passion? Are you doing it for the money? Like, t tell us your interest rate on when you started your business and what's your interest rate now? Yeah, so I, I've always, I told you for me, my last job when I got fired, I said it has to work or it has to work. Mm. So I've been 100% committed to whatever I've done for the last 14 years, whether it's junk removal at the time, I'm committed. Mm -hmm. Moving, I'm committed. Why? Because that was the only way I had to eat. I didn't have a plan B. Going back to a job has never been a thought mm -hmm. ever in the last 14 years. I've never said things aren't going great anymore. I might have to go back. Mm -hmm. I never, it's like an actress who goes to LA like, I don't have a plan B. Right. It's like an actress, they go to LA like, yo, if this don't work, I'll just... No, you're telling yourself it won't work. So I always believed I was going to actually make it happen. Mm -hmm. So to, to just recap on that, um, to recap on that, that's pretty much it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, so, and, so, and so as far as, you know, your interest rate goes, you... you I'm fully committed. Fully committed. Like I'm committed right now more than ever. I'm passionate about what I do. I, I don't believe that you should wake up every day and do anything you hate because life isn't a rehearsal. Mm. On average, uh, we got 24 hours in a day, eight hours is spent working, hours spent preparing for the work, hours spent going, hours spent coming. That's 11 hour, hours out of your day. Mm. Then you got eight hours of sleep, that's 19 hours. You got five extra hours. Mm. I can't spend 40% of my day doing something now mm. that I'm not fully 
interest in it. So anything that I do, I'm all in. Right now, I'm all in on everything that I do. And, and so, and so, do you even, you know, with that type of mindset, uh, do you even believe in failure? Like, is, is failure, you know, e even an option? Or, or what's your what's your thoughts on yeah, failure? Yeah, I, I believe in failure. I think failure is a prerequisite to success. Mm. To me personally, even to this day, right now, nothing I do on the first time is successful. Mm. Nothing. Mm -hmm. I bump my head, I might lose money, um, but I look at it as a stepping stone. Everybody I know who's a multimillionaire or billionaire, they have sustained some sort of failures, mm -hmm. but they lose it. Most people let failure get them out of the game. All I use failure as data points, mm -hmm. what not to do next time or a better way to do it. Mm -hmm. So that failure won't be as hard if, I don't want to repeat a failure, but if I have to, like, what not to do, what, which, how can I mitigate this? Right, wow, wow, powerful, powerful. All right, so talk to me about, about your charge accounts, right, your, your charge-offs. Yeah. Um, and so, so talk to me about your charge-offs. So charge-offs are when you owe some money uh, and the bank is trying to get some money from you and they, you know, they can't get the money from you and so they, they charge it off, right? Yeah. Um, but for us, in, in, you know, inside the vault, your, your charge off are, you know, mindsets that you had to get rid of. So yeah. a, a old Nehemiah Davis that you're like, man, this is how I used to think, but I'm thinking this way right now. Or it might be people, this is who I used to hang out with, but I'm not hanging out with them right now. Talk to us a little bit about your charge offs. Yeah, I tell people all the time, you got to do an audit. So I don't, I don't really watch TV. I don't really listen to the radio. There's nothing wrong with doing either, but I realize those things aren't helping me reach my goals. So I pretty much eliminate. I just start listening back to music when I got my car because mm. sometimes I want to like turn up, feel like pumped up. But outside of that, I'm only listening to personal development. I'm only listening to things that allow me to get better. Mm. Um, Another thing I charged off, that was 14 years ago, drinking. I only did it like once or twice. I got drunk once, I said, I'm done with it. Mm. So for me, I don't, I don't really have any extracurricular activities that I do, so it's not many things that I charge off. I really love pretty much everything that I do. I love the company that, that is around me. Mm. Um, so my charge offs are, are minimum right now, but definitely initially was mindset. I had to get my mindset right. I had to get my belief system right. And once that was set, it's game over. All right, so Nehemiah Davis, so excited, so really gave us a rundown on how he was able to retire his mother, was able to retire his wife, travels on private jets, been around the world, 55 countries, event space business, social media business, uh, mentorship, the power of giving. Uh, failure is never an option if you have the powerful mindset. So I love all of that because, you know, I'm definitely somebody that understands the power of the Sweet. mind uh, because, I, you know, I think mind right everything. If you got your mind right, you got your life right, your money right, your everything, relationships, yeah. everything, you know, works with the mindset. So we're going to do real quick lightning round. I'm going to say a few words. You tell me what the, what, what's the first thing that comes to mind. All right, so ATM. Another teachable moment. Since ATM basically sounds like money, I would say uh, run ads. Like one of the biggest things that allowed me to grow my business, I start paying for advertisement and visibility. So that would be my teaching moment. Run ads as soon as you can to get visibility on your brand and your business. Advice for side hustlers. Don't stop. Like you just got to stay committed and don't like commit to it every single day. Put as much time you put in at your job, you need to put that on your business. Dispel one money myth. One money myth that I hear often is that cars are depreciating assets. So I just bought my dream car, which was a Rolls Royce. But the thing about it is, yes, I'm spent money on that car, but the connections that I made, the networking that I've made, the amount of friends that I've already got in the same industry making money, who owns those type of cars, the relationships are going to far succeed the cost of the car, meaning in amount of business that we're going to do together. Mm, awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, y'all, Nehemiah Davis, Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. Brother, thank you so much. Thank you so much. You know, for, for dropping so much gems. If somebody wanted to connect with you, where can they find you? They can follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is at NeoDeviso. They can also check out my website, NehemiahDavis.com or MyIGCashBook.com. All right, y'all. So that's our show, Inside the Vault with Ash Cash. Thanks so much for tuning in, tapping in. Make sure you stay tuned. I'll see you guys next time.